So when I was running today, I kind of, I saw this girl who was standing at the Lincoln Memorial. And it made me, I, I noticed her. So for some reason, I, she was one of those situations where you, know, you look over at somebody and you see them. In a weird way, you see them for who they are. You see through them, but you see, like, into their, I don't know, into their, like, spirit. Like, it, it all makes sense. It's that feeling that you feel what we know to be love at first sight. Um, not saying that I was in love with her, that she was in love with me truly, but it's almost this jolt. It's like a, it's the initial taste. It's a little sampling of what the love could be between the two of you. It's like, you know, someone's being like, oh, here's a potential. Um, and it's, it's electrifying if you really notice it. And it's, I mean, think about it. I'm sure it's happened to almost everybody. You know, you see that one person, you notice that one person, and then you can't stop thinking about them. It's written about in movies, you know, what happens? They see each other on the metro, and then all of a sudden he spends the next three, like, weeks trying to find her. I mean, Cinderella. She dances, has the one dance with the guy. Out of a crowd of beautiful women, she has one dance with the guy, she leaves. The guy literally shuts down the entire city just to find her. Did he know her middle name? No. Does he know her favorite color? No. Does he know what she looks like without makeup? No. But something compelled him to feel as though he had to know her. And I think that's what's interesting is when we have that with somebody that we don't end up being with, it's, I don't believe that it's any truly, it's, it's any different than with your, you know, soulmate or love of your life or whatever um, you want to call it. But when it happens, like I said, when it happens with somebody who you, it, who, like let's say in the future, you're not going to end up together. You look back on that as a moment. You don't, like a like moment of infatuation but when that exact same things ha thing happens and there's a continuation and actually develops into something serious you look back at the moment as falling in love at first sight and that kind of comes to the concept where if it's the same and every like if it's the same in all of the prospects that you feel that with but you only end up with one of them i don't know if i would call that necessarily love at first sight at that moment but you move forward in time to the point where you fall in love with them you love makes you kind of delete the emotion from the moment you fall in love love cons that's why they say love consumes you because it consumes your mind to the point where that you can't imagine living a reality beyond him or her or having ever lived a reality not knowing them I always ask my friends, I say, weird question that makes you kind of think, what do you think your future significant other is doing right now? The person you're going to date or marry or whatever, or hook up with in 10 years, what are they doing right now? What, how old are they? Who are they? What are they doing? What are the, where do they live? I mean, they're, they're living their own lives. Think about it, before your parents met, they didn't know each other for a while. They didn't, they didn't know each other's existence. But that seems weird because once they're together, once they're in love, you join everything. People join you together too. And I think, I think that's what it means by that retrospective love in first sight. You know, those first six months, you weren't in love. But it was love at first sight because you realized at that moment, you were like, oh my God, that, that was it. That was the one scenario where I found my love. That was the moment out of the 50 other times I've had that connection with somebody on a first glance. That was the one that finally got it. And some people have three of those before they find the one person. Some people have 50 of those. Some people never have, they, you know, have like thousands of those. You know, whether or not they're, and it depends whether or not you're going to get married, you, you know, um, or not even married, just be with people. It's that like primal instinct, that primal attraction. It's, it's consuming to the point where we literally can't remember emotions from the last 
say 25 years. We remember them, but we can't feel them the same way we did, which is what the gift is. Love is like a nice, to us in society, the reason love, I mean, love is, love is, everyone says, I've always said, love is every emotion mashed into one. Why? Because love is a coating over every emotion. You know, you feel angry, happy, sad, frustrated, this, that. You still will feel that the same way you, or in the same thought that you did before me falling in love. But when you're in love, love pours that like warmth over, which is why the color of love is red, pink, the warmest colors. Blue means sad, that's cold, you know? And when love coats those emotions, you still feel all those, but in a lot, it magnifies. But the way that when it magnifies happiness, that one emotion, when happiness and love are felt together, it's illuminating. I think that's something to think about. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy.